right, so here's my drawing. I've got a big brush and a smaller brush. Uh, I start with cad yellow. <clears throat> And then I thought, ah, oh, I should have wet the paper first. So then I curiously went around wetting the paper, kind of wetting everything really. And I wanted to keep that little kitchen window bright. So I had to blot that. So yellow on either side of the the white on the damp street. I went out on, on Sunday during the rain. It had just gotten dark and it started raining, but it wasn't as heavy as it became. So I took the pictures in the, in the rain. Worked out great. So that's the burnt sienna. So I didn't worry about going outside the lines because I knew I was going to be putting in darker colors over it. So now, actually, now it's the next day and my paper dried. So now I'm wetting everywhere where I want my ultramarine blue to go. And it's not going to be an even weight of of ultramarine. I'm going to be putting, uh, uh, it's going to be heavy up at the top, but I wet my paper so much that it wasn't quite as dark as I would have liked, but um, that's okay. So I have a nice uh, warm tone in spots where I'm going to put some ultramarine as a kind of a glaze over it. So I'm still wetting it. So I wanted it to stay wet for a while. And now I had to wait for it to dry a little. <laughs> so. Okay, try and decide what brush to use. I'm going with my oval. I didn't make up a big enough puddle. That was my problem. I did not put out fresh paint. So then I was scrabbling around in my uh, well with old paint. So I got little granules of paint on there. And that is not a mistake. That's a tree going down in front of the house. So now here I'm using a smaller brush to carefully go around that uh, entryway and on the car. And I drew around where the highlights were on the car so I wouldn't forget to leave some white there. So I use dry brush, see that dry brush there to get a little sparkle and to suggest some gravel. So now uh, ultramarine blue, I'm glazing it on the shadow side of the house, being careful to leave those two little slivers of light that are windows. Here I'm putting detail around the gate.
and uh, the darks always dry lighter. So now I'm going back with ultramarine and neutral tint to darken that side of the house. More ultramarine in the road. And now uh, I'm going to get go in with some dark neutral tint. And using a good size brush, I'm suggesting the silhouette of the foliage. And in doing that, I'm negative painting around the foliage, uh, the shrubbery that's catching light. So this is a double duty, doing the trees in the background and the shrubbery in the foreground. And just a suggestion of some branches in the background and, and more of that negative painting. And a little light and shadow on the on the entryway I love doing these silhouetted trees so this is my good size sable brush holds a lot So I can really travel with it without having to go back into my paint. So I dampen the sky a bit so that when I add the trees it has a soft edge. Now watch what happens. Look at that. See as soon as I put the black down yeah. All of a sudden, that side of the house looks pretty sharp. So I decided to, uh, I needed a little height on some trees over here. And so I put the canopy in and then I just brought down the trunk and some branches and I left those air holes, which really make it. Uh, so I turned it in from an autumn scene into a more of a summer scene. Here I got out my rigor brush so I could do the finer branches. And I hold the rigor brush uh, close to the end so I don't have too much control so I can do some wiggly little lines. Notice how I turn the brush in my hand. I, I uh, apply the paint for the foliage in all different ways. Just trying to get lots of erratic marks. This is, I have a lot of fun doing this. And now we're almost done. Have to put the darks in the foreground. So I want to use brushes that I can really load with my neutral tint. This is a squirrel mop. And then I use a silver black velvet uh, squirrel brush. I often have two brushes going at the same time. Often one of them is just uh, just has water on it so I can soften edges. And I, I just gave it a, the paper a little spritz. I want to get some flow here. My uh, board is tilted so I have 
I can use gravity. Uh, and so now I'm dropping other pure pigment into this neutral tint. Some ultramarine, some burnt sienna, just to make that dark more interesting. Now we have the shadow on the right. Again, I load the brush, use a little dry brush, use a little dampened brush, just so it's a smoother transition to the area of reflection in the road. And here I'm dropping that burnt sienna into that dark. Often I see these colors in the photograph, even though it was a very, very dull uh, photo. I can imagine these warms and cools. Now for some detail on the house. This is what I've saved for last. And I've used uh, burnt sienna, in some cases uh, toned down with a touch of ultramarine blue, uh, keeping it dilute, and uh, use this mix to suggest the texture of the stone without getting fussy and about it. Maybe a little fussy. <laughs> adding the uh, dark windows on the side of the house just with a dilute mix. Last touches. <laughs> 